Okay, cool. My man Russell, man, in the building. Right here, the League of Extraordinary Comics, man. man. So y'all live for something. So man, y'all just stick around and y'all watch this because uh, we got something different. Want some content? I got hot shoes, but I'ma leave it to messy beat to gossip. Smash the like button, drop some comments, share this video. Shout out to my subscribers. Let's get it on the next episode. Swahili TV, it's the megaphone with Russell Norman. Support the channel. Welcome to the Megaphone with Russell Norman. Today we have a very special guest, a Chi-Town legend, Chicago's very own comedian, B. Cole. What's up, my brother? Uh, what's up, baby? How you doing, you. man? That's love. All right. Thanks for having me, man. Yep. Thank you for doing this. Absolutely. We're going to get right into this. Um, tell me, you've been doing comedy for about 33 years. Well, uh, yeah, I think, well, yeah. 30, it'll be 33 coming up mm -hmm. uh, on Black Friday this year, 2024. Black Friday. I started Black Friday in 1991, the day after Thanksgiving. Wow. Yeah. Tell me about that. Man, it, uh, I started on the south side of Chicago uh, at, at the South Shore Culture Center that's um, on the east side of Chicago. And there was a show going on once a week, every Friday night. And they called it The Studio. It was taking place in one of their banquet halls, and the studio was a variety show. And this uh, MC, Don Harper, was his show, which is cool. Don Carl Harper? Don Carl Harper. I'm working with his wife in my next film. Oh, wow. I See, love Don. Small world, yep. man. That's my buddy. He was the first one to introduce me to the stage. Old school that player. Night. Wow. Yes. So, that's and, and um, shout out to Don. Don, that's my man. So, Don had that going on, and I was there every Friday since my first time. Mm -hmm. And I remember that night, that first night I got on stage. I don't remember a lot of the comedians that, that was on the show with me. Um, it was a few comics, yeah, it was a few comics, but one of the ones that stuck out was Godfrey. Mm. Me and Godfrey yep. did that same night. Um, his first time show. too? I don't think it was his first time, but that's at the time when Godfrey- Starting out? Yeah, he just started out, but that was the time Godfrey was with, uh, 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 he was a comedy duo with another comedian. I've heard about Godfrey and Alex. Yep. Or Alex and Godfrey, one of them. Mm -hmm. But um, Godfrey eventually went on and started doing it himself. But when I did it that night, it was Alex and Godfrey. I was on that lineup with them. And then they had uh, singers and uh, Michael Jackson impersonators and stuff like that. But Don, after a while, because um, that was the only place I was going, Don told me I need to spread my wings, get out there. So he said, I want you to go see this guy, man. You ever heard of Bernie Mac? I was like, no, I never heard of Bernie Mac. He said, go see Bernie. I'm going to have it set up for you at the Cotton Club. That's where I did my first show. Yeah. I love the Cotton Club, yeah. baby. Yeah. So, so, so Don sent me to Bernie. And Bernie, would, I always say Bernie was the first comedian to introduce me on the stage. Got it. But Don was the first MC. He was yeah. the first one. But as a comedian, on the, on the four comedy shows, Bernie introduced me, man. And it was a good time. Did you bomb? I bombed. Ah, I bombed, man. Yeah. I bombed so hard because... And I, and I took it so hard that I remember driving home crying. Mm. I was crying all the way back to the, How old back to the hundreds. I was 19. He was a 19-year-old driving was, home crying. Crying in my, in my Chevy Box Malibu. You remember the Malibu I was that? My brother had one. Exactly. So I'm driving, and then I, I come off and come off the highway off I-57 on the 127, yeah. making that left to go to the hundreds, mm -hmm. and the police pulled me over, Cal Park Police. And he got the flashlight in my eyes, and I'm crying and stuff. He's like, no, he's like, man, what's wrong with you, man? You know, it was a white guy. He said, what's wrong? Why are you crying? And I was like, man. You told him he I, just I, bombed yeah, I, just like, I was like, I just started doing comedy, man. I had a bad set, man. And he just like, he's like, don't fuck on like, I was giving him this sob story. He's like, don't no, get up out of here. You got a gun in the passenger seat. He's like, just get out of here, man. Right, you can't get out of here. He's like, I don't want to hear that sad shit. Get out of here. So I ended up quitting for three months. Okay. But I didn't expect to come back in three months. I thought I was done for good. So you came back the next year, huh? I came back the next year, and then it's been nonstop ever since. And I said, I'm never going to bomb again. 
Right now. So I made sure that I always go my hardest, 120%. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Not to have that moment again, because it crushed me. Crushed me, made me quit. And I still wanted to be part of the entertainment and movie business, so I got a job at Blockbuster Video. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm, like, I'm gonna be around movies some way, somehow. You right. know what I'm saying? So I surrounded myself with movies and everything, and just like still having that dream. And after three months, man, I was just like, yo, this, this Blockbuster Video ain't my life. You know, mm -hmm. so I went right back to doing stand-up comedy. And um, from that, that's when I uh, met a lot of other legends of comedians um, of Chicago who their first time was starting. So right. they didn't know that I started prior to them. Um, when I went to All Jokes Aside on my return, mm -hmm. it was basically everybody's first time that one night I went. Right. And it was an open mic hosted by Adele Gibbons. So... Speaking of Adele, and who else, like their first time, who uh, else? It was Deion Cole's first night, Yeah. Damon Williams' first night, mm. uh, and I, I think it was basically us three first, right. and then everybody else came behind us, but I remember that night, it was uh, their first time, and they didn't know I was doing it prior, right. that I, you know, because I was scared to go to a real comedy club. Uh, that's why I went to the South Shore Culture Center. Mm -hmm. I heard about All Jokes Aside. But I was like, nah. I was like, that's a real comedy club. That's what professionals hang at. That's what they do. I, I never considered myself a professional comedian, so I'm doing this. Then I did a few um, lounges, bars, like on the 119th around in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And I just go into a bar and just interrupt everything. Like, hey, can I tell some jokes? So basically, you risk your life. To I risk my life. <laughs> to go, you know what I'm saying, start practicing, mm -hmm. getting my chops in, and, and not realizing I'm doing it, doing the hard part first. Right. I'm in lounges, people at the bar drinking their sorrows away, listening to some jazz and the DJ playing or whatever, people stepping on the dance floor. I interrupt all that and be like, mm -hmm. can I tell some jokes? And they let me, and I had, I won them over. Right. But not realizing that was the hard part. I'm not, at this time, I'm still afraid to go to the comedy club because I like that's what professionals hang. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna do these lounges where these people here, like you know, I, I felt their opinions didn't matter. They in there right. already, you know, <laughs> thinking about life and regrets and stuff. So when I went to All Jokes, I finally got there. Dale Gibbons was the host, bro. That was one of the. It, it was so easy. I'm like. Not realizing, and it dawned on me at that point, like, oh, these people come to laugh. Right. These people prepare their week for this Wednesday night open mic to come laugh. So they read it. And every joke I was throwing out there, we just... You and, remember your first joke? Yes. What, what, what was your first joke? Man, my, you very, my very first joke was, uh, see, I was 19 at the time. Mm -hmm. And I, I did a semester at... Uh, Daily College. I thought you were going to say Olive Harvey. No, no, Daily. I was at Daily College. City College. City College. <laughs> and after, and I did that for my mom, because my mom was like, you don't go to school. And I was like, mom, I want to do something else. But I, I, I did like a, a, a semester, <laughs> you know, of, of college, got my grades, sent it to my mom. And I was like, yo, now let me do what I, I want to do. Right? So my first joke was, yo, I, Hey, y'all, I'm a young black man, just finished college, give it up. And everybody clapping, you know, proud black folk in the audience. Oh, yeah, yeah, I just finished college. You know, I'm a young, I'm 19, mm -hmm. looking young and stuff. So they see black excellence, you know. Yeah, just so, finished college. Yeah, I just finished college. Like, you know, that, that's like, well, I ain't graduate, just finished going. And then <laughs> that, that was the icebreaker. Mm -hmm. And then that's when everything else followed behind. But that was my very first joke, even at the uh, South Shore Culture Center when I told you. I performed with Don, Don mm -hmm. Harper. But um, then later on, come to, um, later on, I did do it on Comic View. When my very first appearance I did on Comic View, that was my first joke. But then when I was listening to Kanye's first album, uh, I, what was his first album? Was it Dropout? College Dropout? Mm -hmm. Dropout. In one of them songs, he said that line. I'm, uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I just I, 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 I just finished college. I didn't graduate, just finished going. It's, it's a line he got in the song that I caught. Mm -hmm. I was like, that's my line. That's your line. <laughs> that's my joke, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and, and it came to that, because Kanye knew me. When I finally met Kanye, mm -hmm. he knew me. Right. So I was like, I put it to God, I was like, you, you took my line. Took my line. Uh, he probably didn't write it. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of uh, 
Comic View and uh, BET, Comedy Central, you, you, yeah. you're a veteran of those. Yeah. Uh, so, speaking of veterans, who is your uh, inspiration that made you want to do stand-up comedy? Uh, Comedian. Well, now here's the thing. I've been inspired by uh, a lot of people who I want to be funny. To have to even have a sense of humor, mm -hmm. but I never thought about comedy. I always kept it in the classroom, class clown, boom, boom, boom. And then at this point, I'm out of high school, and I'm like, I gotta find something to do with my life and what I want to do. What do I want to do? And with that, you know, it's just funny how 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 the universe works, where it puts it right in your face. Mm -hmm. And then, and and I remember me and a friend of mine, June McDowell, you know June. We were uh, watching Damon Wayans' half hour special, you know, and this was before anybody knew Damon Wayans' name. He King like, and Ivory Wayans' brother. Yeah. King and Ivory Wayans' mm -hmm. brother. But this one, the Wayans wasn't the Wayans yet. They just did Partners in Crime with Robert Townsend. A Chicago but, yeah. Legend, yeah. So we just, I've, I've seen Damon on that do like a three to four minute set, mm -hmm. but then he had an HBO special where he did a 4.30. And I remember this dude because I connected with him on Partners in Crime. So I was tuned in on his 30 minute special when he wore all black and he was doing all the characters that you seen later on in the living right. color. And like you really didn't know his name, just like that. You just like knew him. You just and he was funny. And I'm watching him, me and my me and June, we watching him. Mm -hmm. And June say something that changes my life. June turns to me, say, B, he reminds me of you. Mm -hmm. And when when he said that, I was like, Yo, you think I'm like funny like this? I said, "Baby, not do you." That's what made me want to do the stage. That's what gave you the bug, in a sense. It's right. It's yeah. like, well, this is what I want to do. I'm gonna do stand up comedy. Right. That was my answer for my questioning, like, what I'm gonna do with my life mm -hmm. now that I'm out of high school. You know what I'm saying? Go do a little bit of college. What I'm gonna do after this? You know, but when that. Was the when, when that was the question? Uh, not when when June said that to me. That was that's all I knew. So what did your mom and your dad say when you told them, I, you know, <laughs> I, I'm gonna do comedy. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life. Uh, what was know. their reaction? Well, that's the thing, because when after I graduated high school in Chicago, Percy L. Julian, big ups. Um, Right after graduation, that summer, my parents packed up and moved to Minnesota. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And they wanted me to come to Minnesota with them. Mm -hmm. And I think I went and lived in Minnesota for like one month. And I was like, I got to get back to Chicago. So when I got, so my mom let me come back to Chicago and um, try to figure it out. Mm -hmm. You know, they didn't know what I was wanted to do, but I told them I didn't want to live in Minnesota, so they let me come back home, and I and, and I, I stayed with June. I stayed with my boy June and his family. Mm -hmm. uh, big up to the McDowell's, you know, uh, Mr. and Mrs. McDowell. They took me in and to to figure it out. But that's the moment we was watching television, and we saw Damon Wayans one night when we was just at home watching TV. Okay. <clears throat> and so when I when I started doing it, I didn't tell my parents until I just really got into the groove of doing comedy. And then when I broke it to them, they're like, what? You know, and at that time, the comedy, the magnitude of, of, of urban comedy was so huge, it was fast, too. So my parents didn't even have time to really have it register in before they saw me on television. Okay. See, when they saw me on television. That solidified it. It solidified it because I think a little bit after I told them I started doing comedy, Comic View uh, came to town to Chicago scout, mm -hmm. and it was like 25 comedians. And now this is my first year of comedy. It was 25 comedians, and uh, out of them 25, they chose two comedians. It was myself and another comedian named Robert Hines. Big up to Robert Hines. That's my buddy. Uh, and we two went and did uh, the early uh, seasons of Comic View. This one, D.L. Hughley was still host. Right. You know, so... And when, and when DL was back the in host, the '90s, yeah, when DL was the host of Comic View, uh, it was it, it, it was a, it was it was you know you would consider really official like how same if you did Def Jam when Martin was the host right before they started switching it up. Mm -hmm. So to have that um, 
on my on, on, on my belt where it's like, yo, I did it when DL Hughley was the host. That's mm-hmm. that means a lot to it's me. It's good for your resume. Huh? It's good for the resume. And uh, so with that, that's when my parents like, okay, I think you can do this, and they just got out of my way. But my mom, she was really concerned about Hollywood. You know what I'm saying? Because now I'm going to spend a lot of time in L.A., California, and stuff like that. Well, I actually yeah. wanted to ask you about that. Because <laughs> you, um, you tout yourself as someone who ran away from the fame. Yeah. Can you explain what that term, run away from the fame, means to you? And okay. then tell me how you did that and what exactly took place. Well... Want some content? I got hot shit, but I'ma leave it to messy beat to gossip. Smash the like button, drop some comments, share this video. Shout out to my subscribers. Let's get it on the next episode.